Harry handed pre-written resignation letter to tell Netflix he is quitting £85 million deal. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle snub Charles as he celebrates his first birthday as king. King Charles makes major change to in and Edward's royal roles and snub to Andrew and Harry. Zara Tyndall's heartbreaking admission about husband Mike following her devastating miscarriages. Princess Kate's concerned gesture towards Camilla during remembrance service revealed. Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Royals News Presenter channel. Please, leave a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you are new here, subscribe, and press the bell icon to never miss an upload. Your support guys mean the world, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let's get started. A royal commentator called on the Duke of Sussex to walk away from his agreement with the streaming giant amid fury over the crown. Prince Harry has been urged to abandon his Netflix deal by a commentator who penned him a suggested resignation letter. Journalist Dan Wooten blasted the portrayal of members of the royal family in the latest series of The Crown and called on the Duke of Sussex to walk away from his and Meghan Markle's agreement, said to be worth £85 million, with the streaming giant. Mr. Wooten branded the fifth season an all-out assault on the credibility, reputation, heart and soul of the monarchy, including the late Queen, King Charles and Princess Diana. And the royal commentator wrote an imagined resignation letter in his Mail Online column which he says Harry should send to Netflix's CEO Ted Sarandos. Mr. Wooten's letter claims the royal drama manipulates the dark final days of Diana. The royal commentator hits out at Netflix for showing the princess as trying to bring down the monarchy. Mr. Wooten also blasts the callous portrayal of King Charles and says they have got the late queen all wrong. The journalist ends his imagined letter by asking for the Netflix deal to be terminated with immediate effect, adding that the crown is causing damage to the monarchy. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle failed to wish the king a happy birthday publicly on Monday as he celebrated turning 74. A brand new photograph of King Charles was released on Monday as he marked his first birthday since the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. The Prince and Princess of Wales were the only senior royals to publicly wish the monarch a happy birthday, sharing a photo of the king to Twitter. They wrote, wishing a very happy birthday to His Majesty the King. And the Royal Collection Trust shared a picture of a young Charles with Princess and, saying, Happy birthday to King Charles III. This photograph from 1951 shows the then Prince Charles kissing the hand of his sister, Princess Anne. The royal family's official Twitter account, which provides updates on the king, queen consort and other senior royals, also posted a video of the band of the household cavalry performing happy birthday during the changing of the guard ceremony. Meanwhile, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex chose not to share a public message on their Archwell website which was last updated on Sunday, although it is not known whether they spoke to the monarch in private. The couple quit Facebook last year as they slammed the hate they experienced online. They have not posted to their Sussex Royal Instagram account, which has 9.5 million followers, since January 2020. Princess Eugenie Princess Beatrice and Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, did not share any birthday messages to the king on their social media pages, reports the Mirror magazine. King Charles III wants Princess Anne and Prince Edward to become councillors of state, meaning they can stand in for the monarch. Current councillors of state include Camilla, the Queen Consort, Prince William and Princess Beatrice. The king also performed the role for the queen while she was alive. As councillors of state are appointed from among the four adults next in succession, they also include Prince Andrew and Prince Harry. But neither Andrew nor Harry are working royals. And so, in order to avoid any chance of a constitutional crisis, legislation is anticipated to identify who might deputize for the king. This could be necessary if King Charles was abroad or unwell and could not carry out his duties as head of state. The proposal of increasing the number of eligible royals is an alternative to removing Andrew and Harry from the list. 
Viscount Stansgate raised in the House of Lords last month how Andrew and Harry could be among possible replacements when one had left public life and the other had left the country. Both Princess Anne and Prince Edward have previously been councillors of state, before being overtaken in the order of succession. Councillors can carry out official duties in the monarch's absence, under certain conditions. These could include the state opening of parliament, signing documents, receiving ambassadors, or attending privy council meetings. Charles and Camilla, as well as William and Kate, are expected to visit overseas in 2023 and so councillors could be needed when they are away. Furthermore, in the House of Lords yesterday, Lord Parker of Mincemere delivered a statement from the King that said adding the extra councillors would ensure continued efficiency of public business when I'm unavailable, such as while I'm undertaking official duties overseas. A royal author claimed to Mail Online that the tweak required to the Regency Act was necessary. Angela Levin told Mail Online the move was a wise strategy to diplomatically remove Andrew and Harry. Nonetheless, she reckons the decision will not be received well. Of course, it is a slight to Harry and Andrew, but there's a good reason and it's necessary, Ms. Levin is quoted as saying. She went on, Harry and Meghan would be absolutely furious with the decision. Ms. Levin added that people would be furious if Andrew ever stepped in for the king. She added, reading between the lines it allows, the king, to ensure the right people are doing the right job. Mike Tyndall's wife, Zara once made a heartbreaking admission about her husband, following her devastating miscarriages. The 41-year-old suffered two miscarriages between the birth of her daughters Mia and Lena. Back in 2018, Zara tearfully opened up about the hard road she'd been on after suffering two miscarriages. In 2014, Zara gave birth to her first child, a daughter called Mia. In 2018, she gave birth to her second daughter, Lena. However, in the intervening four years between Mia and Lena's births, Zara sadly suffered two miscarriages. During an emotional interview with BBC Breakfast four years ago, Zara revealed that Mike had felt helpless during the difficult period. In the interview, Zara revealed she has a very supportive family. Mike's incredible, and it's hard for the guys too, she added. It's very different for us, because we're carrying the child, but for guys I guess it's kind of that helpless feeling, which must be incredibly horrible for them, she continued. At the end of the day they've still lost a child too. The Queen's eldest granddaughter then continued, saying, Being helpless is horrible isn't it? So it's been a horrible road, but, you know, actually now we've come out the end of it, hopefully it makes you a stronger family. Zara also discussed how she dealt with her loss in such a public way. In our situation, everyone knew, she said. And very much when things like that happen, normally it's just your family and friends, but unfortunately everyone knew about it. However, she did receive some incredible support from people she'd never met before. Actually I had so many letters saying, I'm so sorry, we've been through the same thing, which was incredible, and thank you to all those people, she said. But it just showed how often it does happen. Princess Kate made a concerned gesture towards an anxious Camilla during remembrance service, a body language expert has claimed. The Princess of Wales joined other royals at the Cenotaph on Whitehall as they paid their respects yesterday morning. Yesterday morning saw Kate and Camilla attend the annual remembrance service. The Duchess of Cambridge and the Queen Consort stood on the balcony of the Foreign Office, which overlooks the Cenotaph. They watched as King Charles, and other royals, laid wreaths as they paid their respects. It was, of course, Charles and Camilla's first time paying their respects since the death of Her Majesty the Queen in September. Kate and Camilla both wore black coats and hats. Both had three poppies pinned to their coats too. However, according to a body language expert, it was clear that yesterday's service was a nervy one for Camilla. But, luckily for the Queen Consort, her daughter-in-law, Kate, was there to provide an air of calm. Body language expert Judy James spoke to the mirror about what she'd seen from Kate. 
watching from the balcony Camilla combined signals of regal duty with some rituals of anxiety, she said. Judy then went on to say that as Camilla's wreath was laid, she offered a subtle smile of acknowledgement. The body language expert also claims Camilla offered Kate a fond smile as the 40-year-old spoke to her. Otherwise though there were gestures of open anxiety from Camilla. She looked unable to keep totally still and spoke to Kate at one point but while looking straight ahead rather than turning to her, Judy then said. Kate turned her head quickly in a gesture of polite concern. Kate's calm and very still body language was in contrast to Camilla's nervous movements that showed the most in the fluttering of her M-sheet as her two hands fiddled with it throughout. 